Far beyond the world's edge mountains lies a realm of mystery only ever whispered about by the inhabitants of the Old World. These eastern lands are ancient, its people first uniting under one banner as the Grand Empire of Cathay, almost two millennia before the reign of Sigmar Heldenhammer. This was by necessity. Long had they suffered at the hands of the Kurgan and Tong tribes, as well as the claws of the demonic hordes pouring in from the north. But no more. In under a century, Cathay would raise the Great Bastion, a nigh impenetrable fortress wall, towering a quarter mile high, bristling with defenses and infused with powerful enchantments, which stretched from the mountains of Morn in the west to the far sea in the east. This defining monument stood as a warning to the armies of the Dark Gods that humanity would not bow meekly in the face of the abyss. For two millennia, it served as the shield behind which a young nation grew under the careful guidance of its dragon lords. But the terrors of the North were relentless in their assaults, demanding ever-increasing layers of defense to hold them at bay. It is this evolutionary arms race which has led the engineers and military strategists of Cathay to develop one of the greatest assets in their arsenal, an armada of 1,000 airships ready to sail the winds, not just to defend the walls from above, but to take the fight to the enemy beyond. This is the Sky Fleet of Grand Cathay. This video was sponsored by Creative Assembly, proud makers of the much-anticipated Total War Warhammer 3. For the uninitiated, gameplay involves taking the reins of a huge variety of factions led by unique, legendary lords, building up your base of power on a turn-based grand strategy map, and duking it out with your enemies in real-time battles. Warhammer 3 is set to be the climactic capstone of a fantastic trilogy which has brought the universe of Warhammer fantasy to life like never before. Game 3 in particular will explore the edges of the old world and beyond with factions like Kislev, Cathay, the Four Chaos Gods, and more. It's an exciting time to be a fan of Warhammer, so check the link in the description below to grab yourself a pre-order now and enjoy the ride. The lands of the Far East were formed in the eons before recorded history when primeval beings stalked a planet shaped by the Old Ones and the coming of chaos. Of the creatures that endured through this prehistoric age, dragons were amongst the wisest and mightiest. But though they were said to possess a precise alien intelligence, only a chosen few had the ambition or talent to forge nations. The Celestial Dragon Emperor was one such being. Wielding powerful magics and able to shapeshift at will, he took the form of a human male and called himself Jen Yong, unifying the disparate clans which had settled between the fertile plains of Cathay's three great rivers. In these early years, the Emperor would play an active role in the guiding of these people, laying the foundations for a burgeoning civilization. But such a task did not come easy. The borders of the realm were always under threat. From the west came the rampaging hordes of the ogre tribes who raided and pillaged Cathay from their numerous encampments along the mountains of Morn. In response, the Emperor's own coven of astromancers summoned an immense asteroid that burrowed deep into the core of the world, destroying the ogre's homeland and forcing their great migration westward. In the wake of this cataclysmic impact and the subsequent diaspora of the ogre peoples, the western border of Cathay opened to the outside world, although the vast desert further south was irradiated with fallout and became inimical to sentient life. Along the newly established Silk Road came a flourishing trade network as the Eastern Kingdom made contact with civilizations in the West. 
This ushered in a new era of economic stability, spreading commerce throughout the region and creating a flourishing mercantile class. Far to the east, the port city of Fu Chao initiated trade with high elf colonists journeying from the lost isles of Elethys, becoming a cosmopolitan hub for fishing, silks and spices. With vast sums of wealth now flowing into the kingdom from both sides, the Dragon Emperor bent the considerable manpower at his disposal and the talents of his progeny toward the construction of the Jade Fleet, an armada of ships that would further exert influence over the Far Sea and the spice routes to Araby. Once minor settlements of humble rice farmers now blossomed into rich cosmopolitan cities filled with merchants, artisans, and inhabitants of every walk of life. Cathay was thriving and would soon rise to become one of the most populous nations in human history. Yet, as the kingdom ascended to new heights, the influence of the emperor slowly receded. Blessed with immortality, he grew distant and became less engaged with the daily affairs of the realm, spending ever more time in the remote reaches of the imperial palace of Wai Jin. In his place came the sons and daughters of his union with the Moon Empress, Qi Yin, each granted rule of the five major territories of the realm. But even the stewardship of such ancient dragonborn would not be enough to manage every facet of this empire. The ultimate responsibility for the survival of Cathay lay with its people. Internal schisms, rebellion, natural disaster and disease all made their mark, but through it all there always loomed the singular, all-consuming threat of chaos, pressing inexorably against the soul-bound might of the Great Bastion. Let us now take a closer look at this fortified frontier. The northern provinces of Cathay fall under the command of Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. Across these lands of stone and steel, tens of thousands of Cathayan farmers eke out a harsh existence in the shadow of the Chaos Wastes. Defending this territory is an immense series of fortifications built into the very bedrock of the Mountains of Morn. This is the stronghold of Nan Gao, anchoring the western end of the Great Bastion. Known as the City of Smoke, this fortress is ringed by nine concentric walls interwoven with devilish killing grounds, home to countless forges and artificer workshops where craftsmen pump out weapons of war for the conflicts that threaten to consume the realm. Wealthy and powerful due to its location and importance in defense of the homeland, the City of Smoke is granted a degree of autonomy from the capital of Wai Jin and has remained unspoiled by invaders for nearly 2,000 years. Nevertheless, the cults of Qian Chi the Deceiver have taken root in many of their sister settlements over the last few centuries, and Nan Gao is a hotbed of internal rivalries and political intrigue, historically known for its rather contentious relationship with the artificer guilds of the nearby city of Po Mei. In more recent years, Nan Gao's strength has been further bolstered by a brilliant military strategist by the name of Shi Hong. Once a humble peasant in the slums of Nan Gao, Shi Hong showed aptitude for creating intricate mechanical toys at an early age, entertaining family and friends with his wild contraptions. Quickly scouted and passed over to the artificer guilds, he elevated swiftly through the ranks, rising up through the nine disciplines and eventually becoming a master. With a keen mind for warfare, he revolutionized defense of the Northern Bastion, utilizing a philosophy of aggressive support. Rather than wait passively on the walls for invaders to close in, he argued that defenders should do everything in their power to strike out from the battlements to harass and slow their advance, sowing confusion, discord, and fear amongst the tribes of chaos and marauding ogre warbands. 
To that end, he commissioned the installation of an extensive series of mechanical platforms, designed to swing out from the main supporting buttresses of the bastion, extending further over the open plains north of the wall, and allowing crane guns and artillery more accurate enfilade fire down the length of enemy formations. But his most impressive feat was the weaponization of Cathay's fleet of airships. There is some contention regarding their origins. Whilst officially crafted for the common defense of the nation, rumors persist that they were first developed as part of a faction rivalry between the artificer guilds of Nangao and Pomei. Early prototypes were reportedly used to demonstrate ingenuity, to spy on workshops, and to airlift more enlightened artificers out of their host cities. Whatever the truth of the matter, a bloody and violent contest soon broke out as each faction sought to break the altitude barriers set by the other. Sabotage, maimings, and murder began marring the once friendly competition, and no small number of contraptions found themselves rising through the skies, only to plummet from deadly heights for reasons unknown. The drop in military production owing to these endeavors grew so egregious that direct intervention from the Celestial Dragon Emperor's children became necessary. Legend tells of a storm-wracked sky looming over the Great Wall, as rival lanterns from Nangao and Po Mei climbed higher and higher into the heart of the Tempest. At the apex of their flight, a gigantic black dragon, wreathed in sparkling showers of electricity, roared its displeasure, materializing from the torrential downpour and casting the balloons back to Earth. With the lesson made abundantly clear, rapid production of armaments sent to the Bastion began anew. But the blueprint for future warships had already been established, and the manufacturing of even larger and more powerful vessels commenced in earnest. An armada that would soon become an integral element of Cathay's legions. While no two airships are exactly alike, certain characteristics mark all of their number. Held aloft by caged vermilion warbirds whose burning wings give enormous silk balloons lift, the sky fleet of Grand Cathay suspends armored gondolas below, which garrisons a well-armed and well-trained crew of soldiers. Vertical control is achieved by a system of weights, vents, and the careful attenuation of the warbird's flaming wings. Planar control is achieved by way of various sails and rudders. All of these in combination grant such airships respectable levels of maneuverability, if not speed. The air fleet of Cathay is generally made up of two broad classes of ship, the Sky Lantern and the Sky Junk. The former is smaller and better suited for scouting. It is marked by a single balloon with a compact ornamented gondola, assigned a pilot and a crack team of crane gun sharpshooters. These high caliber swivel guns can punch through chaos plate at 150 paces, making them exceptional tools for accurate armor piercing volleys over substantial distances. But, when the firepower necessary to crack through entire regiments of disciplined soldiers is required, the true grand jewels of Cathay's aerial force take flight. The sky junk, soaring into combat with billowing sails and ornate heraldry, suspended in the air by a series of lanterns, their armored cradles able to easily turn aside projectiles. And while they utilize squads of sharpshooters, much like the smaller Sky Lantern, their immense size allows the crew of these vessels to store a devastating array of ordnance, bristling with dragon fire throwers that can immolate entire hordes of onrushing marauders, bathing the ground below in searing heat. They are also equipped with rocket batteries and an arsenal of bombs stored in compartments below the main deck. In the right hands, the airships of Cathay are formidable tools, but let us now consider their strategic and tactical uses. Naturally, their main advantage is their mobility, 
allowing them to travel over virtually any terrain and engage targets from a safe distance. As such, they are commonly used as scout vessels, patrolling deep into the vast steppes beyond the Great Bastion. Descending stealthily from the heavens, they can easily destroy enemy war camps with payloads that leave piles of charred corpses in their wake. Such aggressive tactics have worked wonders in thinning out enemy hordes before they ever have a chance of reaching Cathay's northern walls. But while they have seen tremendous success against the tribes of the Wastes, they are severely imperiled when faced with enemy gunpowder or flying adversaries. Ogre Iron Blasters and Lead Belchers have been known to send squadrons of Sky Lanterns tumbling from the air with their ancient cannons, and equally dangerous are the Harpies and Furies of Chaos, who can easily swarm over ships, tearing men and equipment to shreds. But airships are not entirely helpless in such engagements. As a counter, the Skyfleet is often reinforced by Astromancers, who form protective shields and summon storms to ward off attacks. Yet, where they truly shine is in the combined arms tactics that have made Cathay such a formidable eastern power. Here, the Skyfleet can act as a force multiplier, giving Lord Magistrates and their military advisors a commanding view of the battlefield, using fans and banners to signal troops or to direct fire towards specific targets, they can adapt in real time to an ever-evolving battlefield. Airships can also lay cover fire for an advance, perform a bombing run to soften targets for a charge, or pick at the enemy rear when the battle lines close. At the same time, ground forces can help support the airships, giving them a safe front to pull back to, while also picking off enemies that threaten the vessels. All of this is even more true when it comes to sieges. An excellent case study occurred in the year 2498 of the Imperial calendar, four years before Karl Franz was crowned Emperor in the West. On this occasion, Nan Gao came under the combined assault of mutated Zinch worshippers and the festering hordes of Nurgle, the Plague God. Luckily, as the closest fortified entrance to Nangao, the Snake Gate had recently undergone renovations to improve its firepower in accordance with Shi Hong's more aggressive military doctrine. These helped devastate the front ranks of the foe. Yet, even this was not enough. Despite ruinous creeping barrages unleashed in support of the main infantry assault, destroying vast swathes of the demonic swarm, the tide was still shifting in the favor of chaos. A trio of great unclean ones clawed their way through the melee, drowning in the field of torrents of deadly disease, beginning a ritual that would soon see the snake gate shatter. The greater demons directed their numberless mob to form a defensive circle around their unholy ceremony cutting off the flanks and preventing intervention from any Cathayan regiments. Except from above. It is at this pivotal moment that the Lords of Nangao unleashed their final gamble for salvation. A flotilla of Skyjunks, carefully held in reserve, took flight from their fortified eyries behind the bastion. Carried by a stiff breeze, these surged over the walls towards the dense hordes of chaos. Shrapnel bombs and volleys of fire-rain rockets decimated the tightly packed horrors. With an avenue of attack now opened to the great unclean ones, Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, supported an elite force of Longma riders. These swept through the breach and slammed into the flanks of the corpulent beasts, rending unnatural flesh and deeply wounding the trio. With the ritual disturbed, and the demon savaged by the teeth, claws, and arcane power of an ancient dragon. The invasion lost all momentum and was sent screaming back into the realms of chaos. Time and again, the Sky Fleet would prove its worth as more than just a novelty. Soaring high above the clouds, these majestic war machines 
are an exquisite demonstration of the marvels Cathay's artificer guilds have achieved, an integral component of the Bastion's defense, as well as patrols that keep the borders of the Empire safe. Over the western trade routes to the Gunpowder Road, above the Celestial Riverlands, and across the Mountains of Heaven, Sky Lanterns and Sky Junks form the bulkhead of Grand Cathay's powerful Aerial Armada, providing a substantial force multiplier in the nation's continued survival. While the Dragon Emperor and his progeny still draw breath, the armies of Cathay will defend their homeland and their freedom, unwavering in the shadow of dark gods. It's been a ton of fun exploring the world of Warhammer fantasy, so do let us know if this is something you'd be interested in seeing more of in the future. A huge thanks to the patrons for funding the channel, to Indie Pride from Milk and Cookies Total War for his writing, and to the artists for making this episode possible. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and check out these related videos. See you in the next one.